Edwina earns $4,000 a month and spends $880 on rent each month. Celeste earns $3,000 a month and spends $720 on rent each month. We're going to answer two questions here. Number one, who spends more money on rent? And number two, who spends the larger fractional portion of her income on rent? The first question is easy to answer because we have the numbers right in front of us. We know that Edwina spends $880 on rent and Celeste spends $720 on rent. So who spends more money on rent? That's Edwina. And that's because $880 is more than $720. The second question, who spends the larger fractional portion of her income on rent, is quite a bit more complicated. That's no, not so obvious and not so easy to answer. We're going to have to set up fractions here and reduce them and compare them in order to decide who spends the larger fractional portion on rent. So let's go ahead and calculate the fraction of Edwina's income that she spends on rent. Now this fraction is going to be set up in the form of a part over a whole quantity. The part is the amount of money that she spends on rent because that's part of her monthly income. The whole quantity is that monthly income. So our fraction takes the following form. The amount she spends on rent, that's $880, divided by her monthly income, that's $4,000. And now we'd like to reduce this fraction to lowest terms, 880 over 4,000. We can start by canceling a zero above and below. Or if you'd like, I could write that 880 as 88 times 10 over 400 times 10. And then the tens cancel. One ten cancels above with a 10 below. That's the same as just crossing out a zero in the ones place above and below in our original fraction. Now let's continue to reduce further. 88, I know I can break that down as 8 times 11. 400, I can break that down as 40 times 10. And now there are many ways I can proceed from here to continue reducing, but I notice that 8 goes into 40. Because 8 goes into 40, I could write that 40 as 5 times 8. So I'm just going to leave my 8 up above as is. I'll leave that as 8 times 11 in the numerator. Down below, I'll break down the 40 into 5 times 8. And I'll just leave the times 10 for now. I can now cancel in 8 above and below. Now this is not the only way to proceed, but it's one way we could proceed with our reducing of the fraction. Notice that now I only have a factor of 11 up above in the numerator. 11 is prime. It can't be broken down further. I'm not going to be able to get a factor of 11 from the 5 or the 10 below, so I know that I've canceled 
all possible factors above and below. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply back together the numbers below, 5 times 10 is 50, and recopy the 11 up above, and 11 fiftieths, that's my reduced fraction. That's the fraction of Edwina's monthly income that she spends on rent. She spends 11 fiftieths of her monthly income on rent. Now let's take a look at the fraction of Celeste's monthly income that she spends on rent. The fraction that we're going to set up here again takes the form of a part over a whole quantity. The part that we're looking at here is the amount of money that Celeste spends on rent because that's part of her monthly income. The whole that goes below is her monthly income. So let's go ahead and set up our fraction now. The amount of money that Celeste spends on rent, that's $720 over her monthly income, that's $3,000. So we have 720 over 3,000. Let's go ahead and reduce this fraction to lowest terms. Now the 720 above, I could write as 72 times 10. And the 3,000 below, I could write as 300 times 10. Then I can cancel a 10 above and below. Now there's also a shortcut way to do this where we just cross out the zeros on the right above and below. That amounts to the same thing and it's okay to use that shortcut if you'd like. Now let's continue to break down these numbers above and below. 72 above, that I know is 9 times 8. 300 below, I can write as 30 times 10. Now, I don't have a number to cancel at this step, but I'm making progress. If I keep breaking down the factors that I see above and below, I might be able to find more numbers to cancel. So let's continue. Up above, 9, I can write as 3 times 3 times 8 is 4 times 2. Down below, I have 30. 3 times 10 is one way to write that. Times 10, I'll break that down as 2 times 5. Now I do see that I have a 3 above and below, and I also have a 2 above and below that I can cancel at this stage. And there may be more canceling that I can do. 4 is not prime, I can break it down further. The 10 below is also not prime, I can break that down. Let's keep breaking these numbers down above and below. Now I have a 3 left above times, the 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. Down below I have a 10, that's 2 times 5, times a 5 that's still there from before. Now I see I can cancel a 2, a 2 above with a 2 below. And it looks like that's about it, because I ha only have prime numbers above and below. I don't see the same number above and below. So I can go ahead and multiply the numbers that I have back together. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 5 is 25. So the fraction that we get is 6 25ths in reduced form. We would say that Celeste spends 6 25ths of her monthly income on rent. Now let's compare the fraction we got for Edwina with the fraction we just got here for Celeste. So now we know that 
Edwina spends 11 50ths of her income on rent, and Celeste spends 6 25ths of her income on rent. Who spends the larger fractional portion? We need to figure out which one of these two fractions is larger. And because their denominators are different, because the numbers below are different, it's not that easy to tell. Now let's compare them. We got Edwina's fraction, 11 fiftieths, and we have Celeste's fraction, which is 6 25ths. In order to tell which is larger, I would want to write both these fractions with the same common denominator. Because 25 goes into 50, 25 times 2 is 50, I can rewrite these fractions with denominator 50. In fact, I'll just leave Edwina's fraction alone, and I'm going to raise terms with Celeste's fraction to get that common denominator. I want to write it as so many fiftieths. Now, let's see here, if 25 times 2 is 50. So up above, I'm going to take 6 times 2 to get 12. Celeste's fraction is equal to 12 fiftieths. 12 fiftieths is larger than 11 fiftieths. When two fractions have the same denominator, the same number below, we can tell which is larger just by looking at the numerators, the numbers up above. So 12 fiftieths is larger. And finally, we know that Celeste spends the larger fractional portion of her income on rent. Now let's just sum up our answer. So we can now answer the second question, who spends the larger fractional portion of her income on rent. That's Celeste. Her fraction was 6 25ths, which we saw was equal to 12 50ths, which is more than Edwina's fraction, that was just 11 fiftieths. It's interesting to note that the answer to part one was Edwina. Edwina spends more money on rent. But the answer to part two is Celeste. Celeste actually spends the larger fractional portion of her income on rent.